It was back in 89. My brother-in-law was holding an auction. I saw this doodle and I just fell in love with it. And I brought my husband over, Benjamin. I said, Benji, this guy is really good. He's going to be famous. And he had his doubts, but you know, I listened to my heart. Years later, look at me now. I am making oodles and oodles off of Good Child's Doodles. And that's just it. As the flame of New York's beat poets and folk revivalists continue to shine bright, another less discussed movement was afoot. Gathering in the cafes, bars, and opium dens of Trenton, New Jersey, were a community of children's book authors and illustrators, creating works that would become some of the most beloved exercises in illustrated literary minimalism of the 20th century. You have to understand that at that time there was so much to comment on, uh, war, politics, race. Here were a group of writers that dared to say, you know what, I don't care, and I'm gonna write a four-page book about a tree to prove it. You could walk into a bar and see one of the greats just starting to come into their own. Maurice Sendak experimenting with pencil shading, or Judy Bloom contemplating day-to-day -day tween life, Edward Gorey huffing glue and sketching coffins. The list goes on. But it was the emergence of an enigmatic young man whose simple mind and soft English accent seemed to connect the loose ends of the movement and give it direction. Watching the footage of Christopher Goodchild's first reading, you really get the sense that everything is about to change. Hello everybody, my name's Christopher, and I'm going to read, a, read you a story. One day, a boy saw a balloon. It was a red balloon. Can everybody see the balloon? Talk about toddler art. This was the holy grail. We'd seen absurdism in Seuss. We'd seen wordless soul-searching in Waldo. Yet here was a children's book that actually felt like it was written by a two-year-old boy. Good Child's reading sent waves through the Trenton community, and he was quickly embraced as both mentor and muse by the major authors of the period. When I initially penned Moon, it did not take the form of the short illustrated book for which it's now popularly known. Good night, sick disease of injustice ingrained in the city's barren black tops. Good night, scum and dirt cloaked beneath the warmth of the hooker breast for you are beautiful and I weak. Disillusioned by Moon's lukewarm response, I sought out Christopher for advice. He looked up at me, those four-year-old-like eyes, and said, I think it's a bit long. By morning, two things had changed. One, I was no longer a virgin, and two, Christopher had reworked Goodnight Moon into a modern bedtime classic. Success came quickly to the community of young authors, and with their newfound fame came a faster, more rambunctious lifestyle. Goodchild was suddenly on the outside. He was not one to party hard. Christopher had a particularly hard time dealing with the lunatic theater of Theodore Geisel and his crew of pill-popping ecstasy ravers from South Beach. Soon the bright lights of fame became too taxing for mild-mannered Goodchild. Without warning, he withdrew from the scene entirely. I believe it was Alexander Pope who once said that in every friend we lose a part of ourselves. The best part. I'm, I'm sorry, are we done here? Are we... We're going to cut. Yeah, we'll take five guys. Let's cut, guys. Yeah. Lunch. Yes, I, I'm very glad to be here today. I'm very excited to be writing again. It makes me feel young. I quite like that feeling. Forty years after leaving Trenton, Christopher has finally returned to unveil his first work since Little Boy's Balloon Day. Good Child has experienced a resurgence in public interest. Many in the children's book circle feel as long overdue. We're very excited to release the long-awaited companion to Little Boy's Balloon Day, entitled Hey, I believe that's a bird. We're also extremely proud to announce that the good folks at Starbucks have agreed to sell both Good Child classics in their coffee cafes. I don't mean to bore you, but back in college, my friends and I would get together. And there was one class when I gave, actually gave a presentation on the camera. Hello, Margaret. Christopher. It's been a very long time. It has. It's been a very long time. You know, it's Monday today, Margaret. That, that was my favorite day. Yes, it is, Christopher. <laughs> What 
is the future of children's books? I, I don't know. Uh, is Good Child there? <laughs> I don't know. Adam had never quite seen a bird so beautiful, soaring above the city with such ease. He thought to himself, I think I'd like to fly like that. You look at Christopher, and then you look at me, and you think, okay, here's a guy, he's an aspiring author, he's probably a part-time dad or manager at The Gap, and I'm both, but, you know, then you look at my blog, and you think, well, maybe he is the next good child, I don't know.